thank you for joining with me. We are picking up the reading in chapter four, The Illusions of the Ego. And this is The Ego's Fear of the Atonement Principle by Ken Wapnick, PhD. The ego has every reason to do this according to the thought system which gave rise to it and which it serves. Sane judgment would inevitably judge against the ego and must be obliterated by the ego in the interest of its self-preservation. Sane judgment is in the right mind, which we must continually choose until our sanity is restored. To ensure that we remain perpetually insane, the ego seeks to obliterate all memory of the atonement concealing it behind its dual thought systems of the mind's separation and the body's mindlessness. Thoughts of God are unacceptable to the ego because they clearly point to the non-existence of the ego itself. The ego, therefore, either distorts them or refuses to accept them. It cannot, however, make them cease to be. The last sentence is our symphony's central motif of the atonement principle. Truth has not changed, which the ego fears. The thoughts of God are unacceptable to the ego because their unified wholeness shows that the ego never happened. If that memory of truth remains unprotected in the mind, there is no longer a place for the ego no room for its individual and special self. The ego then has no choice but to defend against the sun's remembrance by bringing the Holy Spirit's truth to its illusion and involving him in the mindless world of unreality, thereby making the separation real. It also simply denies the atonement outright, maintaining its own truth of separation. The ego attempts to save itself from being swept away as it would surely be in the presence of knowledge. Note how many times in this chapter Jesus presents this central theme of the ego's need for self-preservation. The ego judges only in terms of threat or non-threat to itself. In one sense, the ego's fear of God is at least logical, since the idea of him does dispel the ego. The idea of God is kept for us by the Holy Spirit as the right mind's atonement principle. The ego stops at nothing to prevent us from gaining access to our decision-making mind. This is the world's purpose, and the ego fears that the Son will choose the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the tiny mad idea. What tiny mad idea? Nothing happened. Instead of the ego's contrasting and gleeful response, isn't it wonderful that we exist? The separation is true, a fact that cannot be denied. One final point in this section, it is important to remember that the ego is not a separate entity, but is simply the part of us that likes being a part, as well as a part, instead of the whole. It is, the, it is only the mind's decision to identify with the thought of separation that gave rise to the ego, and its ongoing decision sustains it. Since the split mind obeys the principle of one or the other, the other part of the mind that contains the memory of our identity as spirit is buried. The central thesis of A Course in Miracles is that we do in fact have the power to correct our faulty choice, the mind's power of decision. The ego and the spirit do not know each other. The separated mind cannot maintain the separation except by dissociating. Having done this, it denies all truly natural impulses, not because the ego is a separate thing, but because you want to believe that you are. The ego is a device for maintaining this belief. 
but it is still only your decision to use the device that enables it to endure. The ego embarks on an ingenious strategy to keep us from ever exercising that power. Dissociation or splitting it off and thus keeping our decision-making mind out of awareness. This strategy is the subject of our next section. And we will stop there today and move into that next section tomorrow. I hope that you have a most beautiful day and I will see you then. Thank you for joining with me. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.